give yeah. us an overview of, of the Quran, what the Quran has oh, to yeah. say about miracles. <clears throat> There, repeatedly, repeatedly, and as the Lord Jesus Christ anoints a session and gives us the health we need and keeps my throat strong and healthy by his Holy Spirit, <clears throat> in Jesus' name, repeatedly the Quran says, no miracles were given to Muhammad. I'll just mention two <clears throat> of the most obvious, chapter 17, verse 59 of the Quran, chapter 17, verse 59. Chapter 29, verses 50 to 51. Now, why is 29, 50 to 51 important? Because when he's challenged to do miracles, the response is, the Quran is a sufficient miracle, you don't need anything else. Now, this puts Muslims <clears throat> in a dilemma. Here's the dilemma. The Quran's response to the repeated challenge by unbelievers to Muhammad, give us a miracle. In fact, in one passage, in chapter 28, verse 48, they even say, you're so unlike Moses. I, that's ironic, because they say he's the prophet like Moses. But if you go to chapter 28, verse 48 of the Quran, chapter 28, verse 48, it says, why isn't he given a sign like Moses? So <clears throat> Muhammad's two excuses are, well, those generations before me saw the signs and they still didn't, still didn't believe. That was his first excuse. Now, understand his lame excuse. Well, the people before me saw miracles and they still refused to believe. And the second excuse, 29, 50 to 51. 29 50 to 51 well the quran is a sufficient sign it's a sufficient miracle this quran is sufficient in of itself to prove that muhammad is a prophet so the muslims have a problem if the muslims are going to say that muhammad did other miracles that means the quran is wrong they falsify the quran because the quran wasn't sufficient enough he needed additional miracles to corroborate the quran are you sure you want to go that route muslims that's the problem yeah, and so, I mean, really, there are so many issues just wrapped up in, with that. I mean, the Quran, over and over again, says, uh, makes excuses for why Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, but your average Muslim believes that Muhammad's walking around with water shooting out of his fingers, and he's splitting the moon, yeah. and everyone's all dazzled by his miracles, and the Quran is just making excuses for why he wasn't given miracles, whereas in, in any of these situations when it's asked, and they ask, why has not a sign sent down, been sent down to him, and so on, the response should have been, what are you talking about? He's performing miracles left and right. Uh, but that's not so. So that's so that's one issue, namely that Muhammad could not perform miracles. His only miracle is said to be the Quran, which has <clears> got to be the worst miracle in the history of humanity, except for some of Muhammad's other miracles, like <laughs> you know the sheep talking, the the sheep talking to him to tell him it's poisoned and stuff like that. Too late, and then, <laughs> you know he dies from it and stuff. So that you know. I gotta make a I gotta make a video like the worst miracles in history. <laughs> like one one would be the miracle of perfect preservation, right? <laughs> if, that, if that's a miracle, it's the worst miracle in history. But then you've got uh, Muhammad's you, you know miracles when the Quran's denying that he performed the miracles. And then you got the miracle of the splitting of the the moon, which you know doesn't come about till much later. And in the Quran, you, you can't even make sense of it. And then the miracle of Muhammad being warned about the poisoned sheep after it poisoned him. Uh, so, yeah, some really, really lame miracles here. Yeah. But we do have these miracle accounts later on. And, and what's interesting is the Quran, according to the Quran, Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. And according to late, l later sources, Muhammad performed all these miracles. And so that just shows you how incredibly willing the early Muslims were to make things up about Muhammad. Right. Because the, the, the Muslims are going out and they're talking to Jews and Christians and saying, hey, you got to believe in our prophet. And the Jews and Christians are going, well, what miracles did he perform? And the Muslims are going, uh, none. He, he wrote this, you know, lovely Arabic uh, work yeah. that we have now. It's got lovely calligraphy in it. And, you know, we sing this awesome song. Right? They, we sing this awesome yeah. song. And, <clears throat> and, and the Jews and Christians are like, are you serious? We're talking about like splitting the Red Sea and and walking on water and raising the dead. And your guy comes with a Arabic text that sounds like the worst book ever written. Um, so then all of a sudden these these Muslims start coming back with, oh yeah, the uh, the ink's still dry on this page, but you know this this talks about a, a miracle Muhammad <laughs> performed two yeah. centuries ago. Yeah, you can believe us, trust us. Would would we lie to you? Of course you would, <laughs> right? So. Uh, so you, you've got that, that, that Muslims are falsifying their uh, their texts and lying about yeah. their prophet in order to support him because they had no real evidence for him. And it's just all it's just all these it's just all these problems in one. But Sam, 
there is there are some additional problems with when we focus on Muhammad's night journey. So why don't you just go ahead oh, yeah. and, and start out however you want. Tell us about Muhammad's night journey, and then, yes. then we can go into some of the problems. For now, read the Pictal. If you want, just read Pictal. All right. Yeah. Glorified be he who carries his servant by night from the inviolable, inviolable place of worship to the far distant place of worship, the neighborhood whereof we have blessed, that we might show him of our tokens. Lo, he, only he, is the hearer, the seer. Okay, guys, this passage forms the foundation for the story of the journey by night. <clears throat> but if you don't have recourse to the Hadiths, if you don't have recourse to the traditions, you will not be able to answer <clears throat> the following questions. Number one, it says, Glor glorified be he, who took his servant by night from, and I'll give the Arabic terms, from Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Haram, to Masjid al-Aqsa, so that we might show him some of our signs. <clears throat> and then it says, he is the hearer and the seer. So first question for the Muslims, and the Muslims are here. Muslims, please <clears throat> answer our challenges. Number one, who is the servant that was taken by night? Now you're going to say Muhammad. Prove it. And I'm going to show you why you need to prove it and not simply assert it. So number one, prove to me that servant is Muhammad. Number two, he was taken from Masjid al-Haram. Where in the world is Masjid al-Haram? The, the inviolable mosque. Where in the world is that located? And then he was taken to Masjid al-Aqsa, the furthest mosque. Where is Masjid al-Aqsa? Can you show me? from the verse itself, what Masjid al-Aqsa is, what Masjid al-Haram is, who the servant was, and what night was he taken on this journey. The reason why you Muslims have to answer from the Quran, <clears throat> why you must answer from the Quran, because here, let me give you some verses from the Quran. That's it. That That's exactly what I was, uh, <laughs> I was thinking. I was thinking, oh, I hope Sam points out that the Quran is supposed to be explained yes. in detail. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So guys, Muslims, here's why you have to answer. Or if you don't answer, you prove the Quran is a fraud, is a lie. Chapter 12, verse 111. <clears throat> there is in their stories, chapter 12, verse 111, there is in their stories instruction for men endued with understanding. It is not a tale invented, but a confirmation of what is between his hands before it. A detailed exposition of all things. <clears throat> A detailed exposition of all things. In case Muslims don't hear it, this Quran is a detailed exposition of not some things, of all things, of everything, and a guide and a mercy to any as such as believe. Now, 6114. 6114. Say, shall I seek for judge other than Allah? 6114. When he it is who has sent unto you the book, Explain in detail. Explain in detail. Oh, wow. Hmm. They know full well to whom you have given the book that it has been sent down from thy Lord in truth. Never be then of those who doubt. Now, let me read one more. So you see, this is the repeated assertion of the Quran. 1689. <clears throat> 1689. One day we shall raise from all peoples a witness against them from amongst themselves, and we shall bring you, Muhammad, the, supposedly Muhammad, don't know, let's assume it's Muhammad, we shall bring you a witness against these, thy people, <clears throat> and we have sent down to thee, you, the book explaining all things, the book explaining all things. Now, David, again, I'm not the <clears throat> sharpest tool in the shed, I keep saying that like a broken record. If the Quran keeps telling me this book explains everything in detail, detailed explanation of everything, should we expect to find chapter 17, verse 1, to give us all the details necessary to know who the servant is and what these mosques are and where they're located? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, we could we could give a little leeway when the Quran say, you know, claims to explain all things. Like we could say, okay, it doesn't mean everything in the world, but even yeah. Muslims are going to want to want to say that you know it explains all the basically the the key elements of what they need to believe and what these things mean and so on and so if this is supposed to be a miracle and we can't figure out based on the text who it is what happened what this has to do with anything and we can't it, we can't even make sense and this is just one example this happens over and over and over and over and over mm -hmm. in, uh, in the Quran it's a it's a massive problem for the standard uh, what we might call the the argument from literary excellence that the the Quran's main argument from it for itself is that it's so in, incredibly wonderfully written. Well, one of the one of the key elements of this claim that the Quran is unsurpassable is how amazingly clear it is. It's so incredibly shockingly clear that it could only come from Allah because no one could write a book that is that is this clear and that explains things in such detail and yet passage after passage after passage we go to they can't figure out what in the world it means you have to go to to commentaries and other books that come from centuries later to figure out what in the world this stuff means and this is this is aside from all the other issues like you know commanding you know the calling for jihad and uh beating women and things like that where muslims tell us oh that's not what he really means i can tell you what he really meant in his perfectly clear quran that he had all eternity to work on and get exactly the way he wanted it uh, I could tell you what he really means right off the top of my head. And so, it, it, you know, here again, it's, look, this is the Muslim response. No, Muhammad did perform a miracle. Here it is. Doesn't tell us who it is, what happened, what he did, what, whether it's a miracle. Doesn't tell us anything about that. The Quran is hopelessly unclear, and it's it's such a terrible, horrible book that Muslims just twist it into whatever they want. Right. Yeah. What what yeah. what does this verse say? What does this verse mean when you can uh, beat your wife into submission? Oh, it means tap them with a toothbrush. Well, why couldn't Allah say that? Why couldn't Allah say hmm. what you think it means? Right. What does Allah mean when he says fight those who do not believe in Allah? Oh, he means fight people who are attacking you. Well, why couldn't he say that? Why can't he say it like you? Right. Why are you so much more clear than your God and your prophet Muslims? Right. Why are you so much more clear? Why are you so much clearer? Then your God and your prophet, your God constantly brags throughout the Quran about how amazingly, shockingly clear he is. And yet any random Muslim off the street can speak more clearly.